Today I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot and repair the uh, Mercedes uh, stereo for the 1990s. Uh, there were two models. One was an Alpine, one was a Becker. This is the Alpine unit and we're going to hit on the Becker and the Alpine. The differences, uh, the real main difference is if there's audio problems. The Becker system, definitely the Bose amplifier. In the Alpine system, it could be one or the other or both. Uh, we do have a do-it-yourself repair video on the website for the Bose amplifier. Now we're going to do this one for the Radio Alpine radio. Uh, we've seen quite a few things with this radio. We've seen uh, no power or intermittent power. The radio continues to ask for the code. We've seen uh, uh, the volume control, of course, uh, go, get erratic, not work properly, and so on. We've seen broken buttons and the audio out of the stereo snap pop static and the backlights may not work as well so first we're going to troubleshoot uh, no power to the radio uh, uh, of course we're going to start on the assumption that you have checked all the fuses in the vehicle if you happen to have these ceramic barrel type fuses with the metal caps on each end I suggest you clean the contacts on those that will give intermittent power or the radio asking for code all the time but if you want to check radio at the power or no power at all, we do have a fuse on the back of the radio if all the fuses in the car have been checked. Now I also have a diagram for checking power on this here that I'll put up here real quickly. But we're going to look at uh, two voltages coming into the radio. One is going to be the battery, which will be 12 volts at all time. The other one will be the uh, accessories, which should be there with the key and the ignition. And with both these present, with a dead radio and a... Uh, good fuse, I'd say there's a radio problem. Uh, as for uh, troubleshooting that, uh, you can check with your multimeter with this hooked up in the car. I suggest checking the power on the connectors while the radio is connected. Uh, I've seen some weird things with bad fuses, that bad contacts on fuses that if you read the connector, you'll have 12 volts, but if you put the connector into the radio and put the load of the radio on it, the voltage drops out because there's resistance on the fuse. Now, that will take care of the power issues. If you're having uh, to check audio in the car, there are three connectors here on the back of the stereo with the diagram I just provided. This is the main power in and out. This one is for a speaker output and this one is for the uh, CD changer if you have that. Now, if you uh, have no audio in the vehicle, these connectors are all separate. You can remove this connector, the center one by itself, and you can take an external speaker and take your speaker leads directly, touch them directly to the uh, contacts here. You can do that with a connector in. It may be a little bit more safer than going directly to the connectors and shorting them out. But that can also uh, test the output from this. This radio probably puts out 7 to 15 watts, so you should hear something in an external speaker. If you're getting the static and so on, we know that the problem is here in the radio. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, to repair this radio, I have another video on the website that deals with cleaning the volume control by removing the knob and spraying that, but this one I'll say because it is so loose is a bit beyond that. So I'm going to show you how to repair the button problem, the backlight problem, you could also have a phone mute problem on this, which in that case I would look to the trunk. Many of these vehicles are pre-wired for uh, the phone and I've seen it get down in the wheel well and uh, short out with moisture so you might want to check that maybe clean that connector up see if there's a short there but that's one of the problems first we're going to remove the cover the cd player the backboards the front face and so on so we can get this radio totally apart so we can see what all the different problems are with this there is one fine uh, most screws on this are fine thread. There is one coarse thread one that goes right here at the top on the connector. There is also one below it. So we're going to remove the, the coarse thread, uh, fine thread here at the back. This will allow us to take our screwdriver, flathead, and pry the back edge of the cover up. This will release the cover. Next we're going to remove the screws on each side of the dis front di uh, panel along with try and pull this knob off, which we just did. 
uh, for erratic volume controls you can always check the volume control itself sometimes the knob is broken and that could be part of your problem for it being loose now with the two screws removed from the sides here we're going to gently with our flathead screwdriver there's little black tabs down on the sides here that help free this face up now we want to be gentle with it because we already know we have some broken buttons we don't want to do anything to jeopardize any of the other buttons here so we're going to pull this straight off and we have a broken volume control here so I'm going to show you how to take care of that <clears throat> uh, this face will come back to this on fixing the buttons next there are four screws that secure the cassette mechanism into here uh, one at each corner and then one over here next to a little power supply in the motor only one of them has a washer on top make sure which one goes where when you're removing those also along the back of the stereo uh, we want to remove this heat, sh heat shield or heat sink here there are four screws that secure this on uh, one at each end and two in the center here of course obviously I've jumped ahead to make the re disassembly process look quicker now we can remove the back heat sink we also have heat sink on the back of these components whatever you touch now is going to have that heat sink all over it so be careful not to touch that now next we're going to with the back removed and the four screws we're going to gently pull this cassette mechanism up trying to wiggle this board up and down because this board fits down into a connector see our website if you have any other questions on Mercedes for removal and so on you can see this wants to be a little difficult there it lifts right up now we want to be careful with this because we have several more wires coming up here uh, this is the connector the cassette just came out of we have the backboard which is hardwired with three wires we're gonna with all the screws out of the back we're gonna wiggle this board up as well and it releases from two connectors now what this is going to give us is two wires over here on the side and two ground wires here on the back and what we're going to do first is uh, remove the ground wires by putting some heat to them one of them is up here on the very top the other one is down here on the circuit board itself so you got to be very careful with that now this will free up this side of the board we're going to come over here and pull out one of our diagrams here that deal with the violet and gray wires this diagram again I'll put up on the uh, video here as well but we're going to remove these two wires the video the violet and the gray they both solder right here next to each other and we'll get the first one there and get the second one here now we got those two removed we know where they go now this is going to allow you to remove the cassette mech along with the back input and output power board next we're going to come back to the very front there are two uh, little levers here one of them is soldered to the circuit board usually the one on the left and we're going to take our flathead pliers and turn these to made up with the openings on the front of the face and now with those openings aligned we're going to gently pry the back of this board slightly forward not to put too much pressure on the front board because we don't want to scratch or break anything off but it will release as well and this will take care of setting the display to the side next we have a, a metal case across the front that needs to be removed and again if you look down inside on the main circuit board we have these little t metal pieces here that need to be turned to mate with the openings and I have there's three and four see if there's four or more there's four and the board will well, almost lift out of the circuit board or the circuit board will almost lift up out of the case until you remove this solder on this uh, little piece of metal coming off the case here that attaches to the side of the tuner and we're going to straighten this out now that it's been released and this should allow us to pull the entire circuit board along with this front piece of metal up and out of the way now each piece here has separate problems and we're going to go over these separate problems uh, the main motherboard 
if you notice or if you're ever interested in putting an iPod into this it can be done over here at the uh, two one microfarad capacitors here usually you can trace out the left and right out of the uh, <coughs> tuner to these two capacitors and you can put your tap in on the back side of the capacitor or your switch on the back side uh, as for erratic and uh, bad volume, uh, static and so on, we have a diagram for that one as well. What this diagram does is show you the layout for all these components down here. Normally what happens is you have uh, the electrolytic capacitors down here and the output stages tend to leak acid. This acid can migrate across the board. It's a good idea to take a close look at the output ICs on here as well. Uh, make sure there's no corrosion along the legs. There have been some rare occasions where I've had to uh, remove the chip just to clean the corrosion that's down around it. And then uh, the diagram again will show the values and the polarities for each of these components. Cleaning up this area. Uh, if you happen to move components, the diagram shows what's in that place as well. But this is what normally takes care of the poor audio problems. Now, if we move to the rear board here. Uh, this one also has the same electrolytic capacitors on it, uh, or same type. And we've also seen corrosion and uh, migration of the deterioration along the traces on the circuit board like we did on the motherboard. Uh, there is also a drawing for the uh, outlay for this one. Uh, this one also has a diagram and it shows the layout as well. Uh, this will take care of uh, some other intermittent problems that deal with uh, audio and switching and so on. Uh, take a close look at that uh, diagrams I'm putting up here. They will help with uh, some of the other problems as well. We also have the uh, phone and the display. If the uh, cable in the trunk is not in water for the phone or mute problem, we can have uh, poor solder on this board. Uh, usually located over here in this area for the phone. If you look at the diagram, you'll see that more clearly. Uh, as for uh, the backlighting not working, uh, well, we have seen some of the connections up here. Usually it's a cap as well because one of the electrolytics is here, but this area here deals with the uh, backlighting. We also have instructions on where the gray and violet wire goes, and uh, that should take care of the problems on this board. Now, uh, as for the display and the volume control, what you've been waiting for. Normally, uh, this volume control uh, came in broken. Uh, normally, what we have uh, is a part that looks similar to this one right here. Um, this, part is, this part is difficult to locate. This is an Alpine stereo, like I mentioned. Alpine supplies no service literature, so there's no part numbers we learned to go to another part number for parts to repair this volume control. It is a Clarion part number right here. And what we have here um, on the sides of these uh, controls are, are, I'd say, are two Ys and they go into a bracket and they're wide out to keep the bottom case on. And what we want to do is pry these Ys in all the way around. Uh, there are two on each side. And once you pry these up, you can see that the bottom metal case on this volume control will release and come down. Now, it does take a little bit more of the control with it, but we're going to keep this one separate because we know it's a newer control. We're going to remove the last orange or green piece here. I don't know where orange came from. And this piece should release as well. And what we're looking at is this silver wheel here. What, there's the little spring device that sits down in the side of the control that when this control sits down in here properly you can feel uh, maybe hear the clicking on this as it spins now the problem with the old control here of course the Y's it opened up so it pulled it right off or pulling the knob on and off too many times did that but I can see that this little round wheel piece in here is somewhat uh, deteriorated and, and uh, dirty also, the, the center hole on that is uh, round, if you can see that, and that center hole being round doesn't fit the s properly onto the shaft coming out of the radio. So, the reason for ordering the Clarion control is for this one piece right here. Uh, this piece can come off of the control here. We can place it onto the new control, 
and it will line right up and fit right back in. We'll push it back down in so we get the clicking with the control. And this is going to bring it all back. We may take a Q-tip to this as well since we've touched it just to make sure there's no mess on this. Uh, no oils or grease or anything, but it's this uh, disc that recognizes that the volume needs to go up and down. And in order for that to happen, we have some brushes that are down here, and we want to be very gentle with these brushes. It looks like we have uh, two on the left and two on the right. So what we're going to do with those brushes to clean them up is we have a little sanding pen here, and we're just going to brush them real gently just to clean them up, make them nice and shiny. Do the same for the other here. Now I can also see while brushing these that they are bent as well. So I'm going to take my magnifying glass and a small tool here and I'm going to go in here and lift these brushes up just a tiny bit. Now you will got to be very careful you don't bend these or you're done with this control. Now I'm going to bend those up so they make better contact. I can see that both sides uh, one contact is a little bit lower than the other, so I'm going to bend them up to the same height. Now, <clears throat> before putting the new control on, uh, we had to pry the base off the last one. And while you have this free now, you want to take your little needle nose and go in here and straighten up these tabs so that when the, when the cover goes back on, it will slide back on through the slots better. So we're going to tighten or straighten these up a little bit here make this simple I can see one was bent a little bit and we'll try and get these straightened up okay now what that's going to do is allow us to take our control it, it fits only one way uh, one side is taller than the other which will be here so we're going to put the taller side up this should go back down over the uh, Y's here that have been closed up and sit back down right on top and then with make sure it fits snugly and with our flathead screwdriver we're going to bend the tabs back out. We can now feel the click in the control and this will fix the volume control on this radio. We go back to the continuous one way or the other. Now that takes care of the volume control. Uh, should take care of all of the other problems I've mentioned. Now the only part left here will be the uh, buttons on the faceplate. I have seen uh, some time back it's been I saw someone selling the faces online. Uh, they work but I found that the the description of the buttons was not exact. But usually what happens if you look at these buttons oh, I can see some have already been touched up and so on. So what happens is this is a working button. It'll have three tabs across the top, three across the top one across the bottom, one across the bottom. And if we look over here, we have the two across the top, but not the one across the top. And the, the trick to this is to uh, be able to push on the top of the button just a little bit. And then with a Q-tip at the same time, you want to push the lower piece down. What this does is pushes it back so it's not uh, down on the switch which is here so it's not pushing on the switch because you have to be able to push the button to engage the switch on the face so what we're going to do is hold the top real gently push the bottom away and with our soldering iron at the same time just barely touch the plastic on each button just to make it tack down sometimes you might put it on crooked crooked uh, if you do that you don't want to uh, uh, tack it down too tightly but it will last so, with a Q-tip in our mouth, we're going to push on the bottom of that switch that I mentioned and just touch the upper edge of the white plastic to the black plastic so that they melt together. And that's how you fix the switches. We still have three loose ones. We have one, one good one. But again, it's just uh, push the top of the... Push the top of the button in and hold it slightly while pushing the button in and then just tacking those two top white pieces down takes care of the control. See our website for repair of the Bose amplifier. Hope this video has been helpful. Please subscribe and thank you for watching.